Sergeant Sarge reporting for duty, um, and welcome back to this D and D recording thing. I have no idea what to call this. I hopefully when I upload the first episode tomorrow, I uh, I'll, I'll have a name in in time. Uh, this time we're we are joined by Austin. I don't even know if I should keep with the stupid names because we're not gaming anymore. But yo, <laughs> I said during during the audio uh, uh, during the audio test, he gives me so so much to work with. Yeah, well. I believe that was your exact response. <laughs> yeah, um, well. <laughs> so, um... Sounds about right. Austin, if you, before we get into anything, if you want to talk about what you've done and wh why you're here and all that jazz. Uh, I am, uh, Sarge's surrogate brain. I do the thinking for him. <laughs> if you've seen any of his content. Um, yeah, I'm here just as some extra experience. I've done a lot of... <laughs> Tabletop games beyond D and D, such as Shadowrun, Warhammer. I've done plenty of games, and I've done a lot of DMing. I think I've DM'd about two hundred games at this point, a little under. I I actually did not know it was that much. Um, yeah, I. You were part of my first D and D DMing, but I've DMed other role playing games before D and D. D and D was one of the last games I got into. Oh, really? Yeah, I, I don't. I don't know why. I just never found a team. Yeah. Um, so uh, Austin is uh, here very heavily as um, somebody in my experience who knows what the hell he's talking about. He's helped me understand a lot of concepts in terms of of balancing, um, in terms of the way things function. Uh, we currently are working on home. By we, I mean I'm paid him, and he is <laughs> currently working on. Um, homebrewing and artificer class because uh, again i could get into it uh for hours about why i really dislike the eberron artificer and you do shut up my camera keeps shaking i should <laughs> stop bouncing my uh my my desk here um so today i wanted to talk a little about um communication in gaming and some of the the obstructions that can happen and how you should deal with them which again is one of the reasons i brought uh austin in here uh, i figure he has a little bit more uh, I don't know how much, but I'm assuming with that many games, I'm assuming you have a little bit more experience of trying to deal with the ways in which um, to deal with someone who's having issues with any levels of communication. Yeah. My suggestion is if you have a problem with someone, kick him out. <laughs> there. End of video. <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. Um, it, well, no. it, it's actually something that, I, I don't know if this is the video to get on, but but it's something I do want to talk about at some point is the fact that I, I, I've felt often there, there's a lot of times a, a concern if there's a big problem in a group, people want to go, oh, but we got to keep the group together. And, and you really should, don't be afraid to just go, no, get, we're kicking them out. Bye. I mean, we did that with, uh, I, I don't want to name any name. Uh, well, actually, I don't want to, in case you see We've done this. it more than once. Have we done it more than once? Yeah. All right. I mean, <laughs> I was gonna say in case so in case people were talking about see this, but as long as we keep names off, I've done it more than once. <laughs> I'm just a yeah. dick, I guess. Um, <laughs> well, I'm just thinking in general too. It's like when I play video games with groups, it's like, and we have a toxic person. Do we really want this person in a group still? Yeah, but focusing on communication, I, I, I especially with something like that, I can very easily see people saying. Um, hey, no, we, we don't, you know, it's just because they don't speak this isn't their first language, they have anxiety, um, auditory processing, whatever, and, and that, and to me, and this is why I wanted the th multiple opinions, I don't think it's necessarily the worst thing in the world to entertain the fact of if this person's pr issues are proving detrimental overall, we either need to find a solution or talk about you know, maybe we can start a different game night up where we can play board games or something different. You don't have to, just because you're, you know, I, I think that people can have a reasonable discourse about this is causing a problem in game and we can figure something else out. It doesn't have to be a continuation of the game. So first thing I would probably say since we're already kind of talking about is do we want to discuss group cohesion as a concept? I mean, that wasn't what this is going to be about, but sure. <laughs> if that's I mean, the they kind of play... It's like, get to the root of the problem. Yeah. Sometimes communication comes down to the group. Um, so, which, yeah, so we can actually start with that. You had, you had brought up, which I hadn't even thought of when planning it, talking turns, as I interrupt you. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> as you always do. I'm sorry. Continue, please. 
Um, so yeah, I think a big thing about uh, role playing games before anything is always understanding who people are in the group and the culture that you have to kind of understand there. The very much communication, the first thing is people's comfort level and how people communicate to each other within a group. So, like, how do I put this? Well, I think of, if you'll permit me, uh, I, yeah. I, I could think of um, there were people in a group in a game that uh, that we were part of that um, had an issue specifically trying to, A, talk to you as the DM because you were on the other side of the room in the, within the setup, and mm. then had issues with the, the people that they were sitting next to just talking too much, so it was distracting to them. So one of the basic solutions we came up with, that the person themselves came up with was just to move seats around. Yep. So that they could sit closer to you, they could more appropriately uh, address you without having one person in each ear yelling at, across the table at them, that, that kind of a thing. This is actually where yeah. I look to, to Gordy. Like, like, I don't know if that's ever been an issue for you. The group, groups we've had have usually been decently small. It was at one point. Um, when we used to do Tuesday games, I used to sit next to one of our players but I was having such a hard time focusing because uh, I love them to death, but they are very loud. So it was really hard for me to focus personally. So I moved over to the next couch next to T and I was able to focus a lot easier. And you, this is more of a me thing. I think I brought it up last time, but I cover an ear to focus my sound direction, if that makes sense. Yeah. So having said person next to me talking loudly makes it harder for me to process things because I'm hearing that much more than I'm hearing everything else. If you're watching this, you know exactly who you are. <laughs> and you know they know how loud they are. <laughs> yes, but I'm trying to be nice. <laughs> so. But that's a me thing. Like, I... When things are loud, I can't process things properly. Well, this goes so back. So moving seats did help. Yeah, well, it goes back into what I was saying too. With, with any, I, I don't. Again, I'm not claiming any kind of. Ow, my shoulder. Not claiming any kind of expertise or anything. Um, but uh, if you have any kind of auditory processing issue, as I understand it, um, it can create an issue with with talking turns, as we had said. With with I'm, which is the whole reason I then go Gordy. I want your opinion on this because Gordy's not saying anything as you and I are talking. <laughs> About you know what I mean? Not that it's a problem at this juncture, but it, but I can see that that an inability to properly process what's happening, as well as uh, taking your thoughts and verbalizing them, being an issue. Yep, I, it's one of the reasons like we showed up or, uh, showed last time is why we started the decision tree and stuff like and stuff like that. Is so while I'm listening. I can look at something and and do muscle memory, basically. Or it, it's hard. <laughs> it's hard to really explain, because um, as we mentioned before, I'm not diagnosed or anything. I just I'm still learning my own brain. Well, you you also have issues, uh, and I, I I don't mean this in any offensive way. With um, uh, what what is the word? No uh, um. Articulation, that's the word. You, you have issues with articulation. Shadow, please cut that pause short. Um, <laughs> Shadow, any... please extend that pause to like <laughs> three minutes. But you, you have trouble articulating uh, your thought processes, which I can only imagine makes explaining them a lot harder. Yeah, um, <clears throat> it, it definitely doesn't help that a lot of words in Dean... The best way to explain it is when I read a word... And then I hear a word. Sometimes I'll think they're two different words. Like we talked so, about last time with, with Island and Islam. With, yeah. So when I hear you guys say a, a certain words and then I see it on a paper and it looks very different, I can't put it together. Or I can't speak it because my brain is saying a different spelling, pronunciation, all that fun stuff. Um, I'm, so I'm... I, I start stuttering. So, um, sorry for the cut. Um, 
with, with conversations about that, I, I wanted to start talking about potential solutions, things that you might want to, to look at to do about this. Because, yes, it's a, it can be a problem. It, it can be. A, the first step is recognizing it's a problem. And, and I do think that's something that that should be seen. You, you do want to, especially I assume, and, and in my experience, at least as a DM, you, one of the big things is watching your players. Um, watching them for a myriad of reasons, making sure that people are actually enjoying themselves um, and, um, and making sure that someone isn't trying to say or do something and getting frustrated when they can't. Yeah, um, I've had experience. I've had experiences with mm. that, as you guys have noticed. When I get very flustered with my words, because I can't artic I can't. articulate. I can't do that <laughs> very well. Case point. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So I get flustered. Um, honestly, I think one of the best things to do in this kind of situation is to make sure your players know that they can talk to you in private about these things. Because I knew I could talk to Keith and Austin about any issues I had, especially with the attention stuff. Because they're the ones running the game, so they have the power to go like, hey, shut up. Let them talk. <laughs> yeah, because actually I, I've had, I've, in our game, we did have some, some small problems with trying to let everybody have a moment to, to speak because some of the... God dang, I'm not used to this mic, I'm sorry. Um, to, or, well, I'm not used to the mic like this. Um, but yeah, we, we had some problems because several of the players just kind of very heavily attempted to dominate um, the, the the session and did successfully very often, which I think speaks more to, about my DMing than them. Uh. It wasn't it wasn't like a fault of theirs, like they weren't trying to. It's more like I, for example, I have a very timid, quiet personality, and one of our friends has a very ex ex um external, loud, prominent extrovert. I believe complete... is the word you were looking for. Thank you, thank you. The complete opposite of me. So my reaction is to be quiet and sink like a turtle. Yes. Austin? So one of the, that's one of those things that... Two things with that is, like... One is, sometimes it's just the group. Like, I find that when you have people who are very int introverted, it helps to have everyone being introverted and vice versa. Mm. Which is why I think our Wednesday game works well. But I'm... Ignoring yeah. you. Yeah, I was about to worthless. say. Because I'm worthless, is that what you said? Your catastrophe ruins everything, but beyond that. <laughs> where it's a three-person game where two people are very introverted. So mm. it's a lot easier to manage that. Yeah. Whereas a lot of time, there'll be like a game of six people and two people are just extremely into the game and take up a lot of the time of the game, mm. which isn't inherently bad but it is a six person game mm. um the other thing i find that's helpful is you might have seen me do it as dming is basically if noticing based i use the term screen time based upon people who are role playing at the time uh you were glitching a little so i just be uh role play he uses the term screen time <laughs> yeah so basically you know screen time is like whenever a character's on screen whenever a player is role playing so if one player is not role playing a lot, it's as your job as DM, just constantly cut back to them. Make sure that they are, if they want to be role playing right now, that they're getting the chance. And oh. with times with like, so like with Gordy, and our other player in the Wednesday game, when uh it was when we had one other person, and it was like two groups of two, where there's an introvert and extrovert on each team. What I would do is basically, I'm not, uh, I asking is like I don't know what I want to do because I'm an introvert and. I don't know kind of thing. I do the, okay, this thing is happening to you. How do you respond? And tell everyone to shut up while this thing is happening to this person. Basically mm. not like, do you want to jump into the conversation? No, this drunk guy is going to come start talking to you. Mm. So that basically, actually, instead of having to engage, you're just responding. That actually has helped me a lot. Like Personally, I'm not super comfortable with the role-playing stuff. I bounce off of people really easily. So if you give me like someone to talk to... I can bounce off easier than me going, I go up to character. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so there's 500 billion different rules, and, and it comes down to, um, I think, the, at least to my mind, feel free to correct me, I'm not thinking of something. When it comes to comprehension, there's there's 
two main types I've experienced with players and, and my uh, other people in there is um, not properly being able to process what we're even talking about. Like with, we talked with Thaumaturgy, um, you know, the, why is my camera changing focus? Um, uh, we talked about Thaumaturgy. Your to, lighting. Um, Sorry. No, you're fine. S -s Stop apologizing. Um, so, you know, Thaumaturgy is a big word it's it's in it um especially as a spell thaumaturgy and prestidigitation which i would love to try to see to see gordy try to say three times fast um is prestidigitation as yeah well, well, uh, this isn't here to make fun of you gordy you didn't actually have to no i'm just proving the point <laughs> yeah but um so there's a lot of you know rules that go in with those two spells um uh, that are very aggressive. And the other kind um, of comprehension issue that I can think of is very heavily geared towards the concept of just remembering all these rules, which is something usually Austin and I clash on very often. I, I use the word clash. I try very hard not to be a d about it. <laughs> Again, Trying shout is out, a word. Shout out, censor, censor my swearing. But yeah, um... I, I genuinely do. I don't know. You could believe what you want, but I, I try to make to make this point that at any juncture, you shut up, Keith. I don't care, and we can move on, and I'm not going to be upset about it because I know I can be an a-hole rules lawyer about things, and I don't want to be. Um, it's just kind of the way my brain functions in terms. So I, I don't know what you've experienced in terms of comprehension issues like that, Austin. Yeah, uh, a big thing I find is a lot of... I DM a lot of games because I am the type of person who will read the entire rule set of a game so that we can play it. Yeah. And then everyone else in the group that I will form with, like, like with Shadowrun, I read the whole rule book at one point. I was ready to just play it that way. Didn't end up happening at the time. But, like, uh, what was the game we were playing? Uh, Call, of Cthul Call of Cthulhu. A bunch of friends of mine wanted to play it, known how to play it, so I read the rule book and DM'd. And I basically just guide everyone through how the rules worked. Because hmm. the thing is, no one wants to learn the rules to a game. Put your hand down. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I enjoy it. Yeah, it's... I do too. Most people don't like learning the rules yeah. to a game. They like playing. So a lot of people, I'd say a vast majority of people who play, like, say, D&D, have not read any of the rule books to completion or even to, like, half completion. They just read what they need to know for, like, their character. And then have the DM or other players who are experienced teach them. It's how most board games and tabletop games work. Yeah. So when you have something like a spellcaster, it's like all these rules that pull from all different types of the book when you haven't read the full book. It's very much like jumping from section to section to section trying to figure out what the heck this thing is saying. Yeah, no, I, I want it because I wanted to be like, no, I, 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 because I've read uh, like most of the rules, if not all the rules. And then I remembered that it's like, a month ago, I've been playing since I was 18, which is don't ask me. God, I'm old. Um, but I've been playing for, eight. <laughs> for for freaking ages and ages. Um, for me, at least. I'm sure this because I know there's veteran players have been playing for 30 years, 40 years, whatever. But for me, it, it's been many years. It's been long enough I should know these rules. And I just learned like a month ago that uh, your resting hit die, you gain half of your maximum resting hit die per long rest. The entire time, apparently, some DMs at some point said you regain one resting hit die per long rest, and I just went with that all this time. Like, uh, even better one that I would go with he... was the interchangeability of actions and bonus actions. Yeah. You're not supposed to... If something is set as a bonus action, you uh, by the technical rules, you can't then spend an action to do a bonus action. So for spellcasters, for anyone who plays, for example, Healing Word, you can't cast Healing Word twice a turn. You can cast Cure Wounds and then Healing Word, but you, that's it. You can't. I, I didn't know that. Gordy, you were trying to say something. Sorry. Uh, Y'all glitched out on my end, so I wasn't sure if it was just me or not. Hmm. Yeah, in the first recording, I, I try because I have to, to look at my other screen where my recording is playing is way over here. And apparently, towards the end, my my capture just glitched out, and as a big chunk where I'm just sitting there like, or whatever, <laughs> <laughs> it's weird. But please make that a thumbnail. 
<laughs> You're the one who makes my thumbnails, Austin. Ah, uh, that's a thing, isn't it? <laughs> yes. Also, we need to um, add Gordy to our little uh, caricatures. Mm. But you, I also know that you're you're busy uh, dying of the uh, Backstreet Boys reunion tour. What? <laughs> it's a Game Grumps reference. The the whole, you know, horrific cough cough thing going on. They jokingly call it the Backstreet Boys reunion tour. Ah, uh, I see. He he is not because actually. Because it's gonna be me. <laughs> That's in sync, not Backstreet Boys. God, it's not even in sync. Like not even in sync. Anyways. Do I look like the person who listens to that shit and stuff? <laughs> he he doesn't actually have tickets to the Backstreet Boys review tour. Moving on. <laughs> I don't think. So, yeah, it's one of those things of... It comes down to getting used to it just by playing it a lot. And playing with people who know the rules and playing with people who don't know the rules. Like, when we say, I believe Gordy has trouble with this, where it's like, roll me... So your damage is 2d8 plus 10. 2 yellow plus 10. Okay. It's one of those things that, like, I know what 2d8 plus 10 is. Yeah. I even know, like, the averages. But it's, like, someone who's not used to, like, just someone spewing off that jargon fast is going to grasp it. Yeah. Yeah, It that's one of the reasons why we did the um, colored dice is to help. Because not only do I struggle with the shapes, I... If you say yellow, like two yellows plus a number, I can do that way easier than whatever the hell you said. <laughs> yeah, two d eight plus ten. Um, but yeah, the, the, in my experience personally, it comes down to say running one session, getting a feel for things and how they work out, um, and then going all right, and then recognizing the people that are struggling and telling, saying, hey, pulling them aside and trying to work with them to help them understand better what they can do. Like, uh, that was the other thing we didn't um, really do. I wanted to do in a, a Comic Sans in a little bit better formatted was for when you were playing the Battlemaster. Excuse me. Um, rolling, doing your options um, on a separate sheet. I'm also trying to yawn at the same time. Jeez, I'm crow. Uh, on a, you know, a Comic Sans, larger font, so that because all your... Um, are they Battle Masteries, Austin? Is that right? Uh, I don't maneuvers. know. Maneuvers. Maneuvers. I told you, the rules are up here. Um, they're all your, your maneuvers um, on a separate sheet so that you could, um, with kind of shortened language and more aggressively characterized to help you. And it's it comes down to the simple fact that being a DM takes frickin' forever, for in my experience at least. Uh, one of the best examples is I have bow attacks. I don't know the official names, but we've shortened them to grapple, bomb, and line, which um, my brain process is a lot easier because I think of video game terms versus what they actually are. Because I you have experience in video the... games, uh, they're called yeah, arcane cause shots. Because uh, you are in, the, it's a different character, same concept though, um, an arcane archer. Yeah. So, I, the best way I can explain it is if I can connect it to something I already know, like video game terms, it's easier for me to process quickly versus learning all these new terms. Yep. Mm. That's something I do with games that are not D&D, for people who only play D&D, is I'll use like, terms that are equatable. Yeah. In that sense. Yeah. Uh, another thing is, with that kind of thing, is one thing, I have deal with a large range of skill levels with DMing. Because I with, DM for a lot of different people. With me being the bottom of the barrel? Um, Both of you guys are in the middle. Yeah. Oh. So, I, I play with people like, who do like, Min Max Warhammer 40k, oh Jesus, uh, yeah, 40k games, and it's just like the most fast-paced number calculations you'll see in tabletop. Hmm. And then I also play with people who don't have who don't roll their own dice. I, as the DM, roll all the rolls for them and tell them how it goes. Hmm. So like with skill checks, I like to stealth. You got a blank, and then they know they got that. I mean, I guess that makes tailoring the game to them pretty easy. 
Cause, well, but, works for the person. But by the way, as DM, never be afraid to cheat. Absolutely <laughs> cheat. Just don't cheat to be a dick and, and kill your players. But absolutely cheat. <laughs> yeah, actually, roll out in the open for that specific group so they can see what I'm doing. But mm. they don't have to worry about numbers or yeah. like the all the jargon, all the stuff they don't care about. They just want to do the role play. They don't care so yeah. much for the actual mechanics of the game. That definitely also helps for people who have like discalcul discalcul discalcula. Yes, discalcula, <laughs> which I think is that's basically what it's, dy it's dyslexia with numbers. Which so <laughs> that's it. Go, sorry, go ahead. Which definitely helps uh, if someone else does it. Like sometimes you'll roll it for me. Yeah. Or do the math for me quickly because I struggle. Like six and nines look the same to me half the time, mm. which is annoying. <laughs> Yeah, um, and again, I, this is why I think, especially as a DM, learning your players and what issues they might have is so important. Because like, I, I actually didn't even know that dyscalculia and, and dyslexia were different. I assumed that they were one and the same. They overlap, but yeah. overall, they're very different. <clears throat> I, I just assumed... Most of the time, you have both. It's actually been interesting looking into it with you, because um, I just kind of assumed... Test subject. That's why I worded it the way I did. Um, I, I very much, in my head, when I had heard about dyslexia and things like that, I had always assumed that, that a symbol is a symbol. It doesn't matter if it's an English letter, a number, or an Egyptian hieroglyphic. A symbol is a symbol, and it, 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 it's always difficult to process through what they are. And I've learned I'm wrong. I'm just, just F me, I'm wrong, <laughs> which is fine. It's just, it's just one of those situations. Like, I thought ADHD was, like, this giant crazy thing you saw on TV, and then I met you. Oh, that's and um, that's about ninety percent right. <laughs> hey, and that, that's just because you watch Clone High. <laughs> um, yeah, and it's just a point. It's like just education. Um, so um, and one of the the uh, last points I wanted to talk on a little bit, and again, it it actually I think leans more heavily towards Austin's expertise in that area is um. Because I'm, I'm actually not sure exactly what I have to say on it, as I've never looked at it heavily. The idea of when, when should you stop everything, slow everything down to help a player, and when should you just kind of hand wave it away of, all right, look, you don't understand, it's fine for now, you don't need to understand, we can get back to it later. Right. In what regards? Um, so, well, like, I can give an example. Um, and I apologize, one of the main ones I think that I'm willing to talk about and name would be, like, Gordy. Gordy going, um, I'm just trying to think of, like, um, when a spell hits Gordy, and they, you're trying to explain what the term incapacitated means. Your, your character is now incapacitated, I realize that's not a common thing to do, but, um, your character is now incapacitated, and Gordy's going. I don't. I don't get what that means. At what juncture is it is it acceptable to be like, well, look, we, we can talk about it on your turn. We'll we'll do that later. Right now, we want to move on. Versus stopping and trying to make sure that that Gordy has a full comprehension of what's going on around them. This is going to yeah. be be annoying to me. <laughs> I keep hitting the mic. So sometimes it comes down to how much they want to know. Some mm. people really don't care about understanding the rules fully. They just want to know what they're capable of and what they can't at that time. So mm. it kind of depends if you want to learn, like, what does it mean to be, like, what are the differences between paralysis and paralyzation? Or it's just like, you can't do this now. Uh, is there a difference or it's like, in D&D? &D? Yes. It's just a pronunciation difference. Uh, no, it's not pronunciation. I know that. They're two different words, but paralyzation is... I don't know is why I said, but paralyzation and petrification. Oh, petrification. You said paralyzed and paralyzation. And I was like... One is yeah. a, sta a status, the other is the act of happening. Yes, yeah. paralysis and paralyzation, or um, <laughs> petrification and paral and paralyzation. See? Yeah, no, that, no. So I, you know what? I can't even go after. Yeah, yes, no. I can, yeah, yeah. Okay, continue. Um, did you want to say something, Gordy? I uh, just as an example, like for me personally, a lot of times I just need a smaller word or a cinnamon. A c Synonym. synonym synonym for said word like when you said incapacitated you could say knocked out yep or um, or, or just just multi uh, maybe something that's longer something like that just a different he's 
I'm interrupting oh, you. Continue. Everyone's glitching. Oh? You can hear me, you right, Austin? Out. Yeah. It's just Gordy. It's on your end, Gordy. It's all you. It's all your fault. You're ruining everything. <laughs> I was just going to say, I don't know, if, can you hear me, Gordy? Yes. Okay, I, I was going to comment. Or what I've found working with Gordy, one of the things is, is often actually using more words that are smaller. So instead of petrification, you can go with turn to stone. And Being it's it's words helps. Yeah, and it's a lot simpler, as well. You know, it, it comes down to because there's it's an often an interesting balance, at least to me, because I'm the, I'm the a hole rules lawyer that tries to be to acknowledge the fact DM has final say. If anyone who's a rules lawyer, I as as one, I don't think there's a problem with it as long as you try to aggressively make sure everyone in the group knows. GM has final say. He can look at that rule and go, "No, that's stupid." The the rogue now gets four hundred d six sneak attack. What? <laughs> it doesn't matter. The DM has the final say, and if you don't like that, leave the game. But um, it gets interesting with when you change names and when you ch when you slow things down and try to alter it. Um, for me, at least, uh, going well. What's the official terminology? Because that matters in terms of what's happening, the ways the spells works. Um, yada yada. Yeah. Like uh, um, great example, grappling. Grappling is both an attack and a skill check, so that can matter for things like, say, a rogue. I actually don't know the official ruling, but if a rogue is proficient in athletics uh, and they're level eleven or higher, do they get their uh, reliable talent feature on a grapple check? Because it's an attack, but also a skill check. Right. Sorry, Gordy. I know I got real complicated there. I'm, I apologize. I, uh, I'm assuming we don't want to go over that now. <laughs> yep. I can I can um, play it later, Gordy. <laughs> perfect example. What happens? Yeah. Yeah. So, like, with that example, it's basically upon the DM to explain, say, this is how it works, and then give a brief explanation. And if they don't understand, like. The big thing is making sure that un characters understand their ability to make choices. Like, mm. if they don't understand the rules of, like, say, a how a certain spell works in terms of, like, saves, they're not going to know how to use spells. So you just need to make sure that they understand what their choices are whenever it's their turn. Basically, you don't need to understand, like, how to be better at defending yourself against grapples or, like you can use this ability than just, like, when's your turn, enemy grapples you. You can choose between these two skills. And if they have an ability, like, I don't know, like, like Lucky, tell mm -hmm. them when it comes, whenever an option is presented, present them with each option as simply as possible. So, once again, it comes, it, it, it comes down heavily to the DM understanding their options. Yeah, it's, a big part of it is not explaining why rules are, work or how they work it's explaining what each individual character can do in response or as an action yeah basically it players don't care about the balance of the game typically hey. <laughs> they care about what they're able to do on their turn and how to stay alive type stuff yeah they care about what they can do as a character not how to make the rules make sense if that yeah makes sense yeah, yeah. so in the example it i does. had it, yeah it, uh and Sorry, I should stop. Gordy, if, if you had... No, I just said it does. Okay, I just want to make sure I wasn't interrupting you for that. Yeah, so the example I'd given okay. about the, the grapple, if Gordy's the rogue, rather than trying to make Gordy understand all the garbage I was talking about with the way it's attack, a skill check, and reliable talent, and all that, if we assume reliable talent, is, as written, is it does affect it. I'm not saying it does. I don't know. I'd have to go heavily into that. So, but... as a DM right now, I'd say, uh, I'm going to say no, because it's part of you're using it as one of your attacks and not as the full action ability. Or I, I, I meant on defense, what? but only, yeah. not even. To, I'm just saying though. The, the point is, if it is, just assume for argument's sake that we're you were saying yes. Reliable town is active. We all we need Gordy to know is roll your orange, your d20, and if you get lower than what I think it's lower than eleven, it's counted as an eleven, right? Or is it a ten? Ten, I believe. Yeah. Uh, if you rolled a ten or lower, it's just it's te uh, a ten. Oh, okay. Yeah, see, so now Gordy understands that rather than the massive jarble that I was talking about before. And if you, just from a personal thing, if you're having a player like me, don't 
just read out the book jargon because I'm not going to comprehend that at all. But yeah. So the speed... one thing that I find that happens a lot is with spells, mm. with people not understanding their use case. Like the we... game was designed for. We haven't had mm -hmm. a big argument about this with the jump spell. <laughs> yeah. Um. Basically, spells have certain ways they are meant to be used and what they can can't be used for, like minor illusion versus major illusion versus silent image. And a lot of people will look at those three things as a whole bunch of text and just like they have very three different purposes and strengths and mm. weaknesses. As a DM, I find if someone's like, especially if it has someone who doesn't like reading the rules or doesn't get it or whatever, just explaining this is used for this scenario, this is used for this scenario. Mm. And don't be like, yes, technically you can use this for this scenario and this if for this if you do it this way and like you can kind of cheese it. No, it's it's meant to do this. Use it for that. Yeah, my, minor illusion is when you want a singular small image that doesn't move. Yeah, one of the things I commonly equate to is illusion spells are not to make you invisible. That's not how they work. It's not like oh well if I hide it behind here I make the exact image. That's not what's meant to be. Don't. <laughs> Use it that way, just use it as a minor illusion. Yeah, if you want I, I remember. Get invisibility. Yeah, I remember trying to do that. And I remember at the time you let me, and in retrospect, you probably shouldn't have. Well, I let you because you guys didn't realize all the other things that would come with it. Like, well, if we make an illusion of Gordy on top of Gordy so that we can have a dragon eat oh. Gordy. Gordy's still physically there, so they'll still get eaten when the dragon goes to eat the illusion. Well, yeah, we were trying to Didn't explain that. that... actually happen? Yeah, yeah, we were yeah. trying to explain that the full square, but I was actually thinking back to the first game I was a part of you DMing. Yep. Um, with um, Elliot. And he, I, I remember doing that, and at the time you let me, and in retrospect, I'm like, maybe, because yeah, legit, the minor, uh, or invisibility and greater invisibility exist for a freaking reason. Yeah. Um... So, but that yeah, gets, that gets into balance stuff, which if people are interested at all, I would. Oh boy, Austin, I, I will I will force Austin <laughs> and we'll go off about balance for for hours. Oh boy, a D and D podcast in the future. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm kidding. Eh, who, who the hell knows? But um, so yeah, just a perfect example. So uh, I feel often, and I'm not. I don't know for a fact. Um, a lot of the the pace, I think that's the way I'm going to word it, the pace of the game as a DM you want to look at should be dictated um, by the players themselves. She's uh, a crow, and what they're comfortable with. Yep. And and you should, I'm assuming you should go there, but what um, what would you think, um, I'm curious, as a player, if, if, um, if so Gordy and I say are, are part of the same, you know, the three of us are players, we have another DM, whatever, um, and wh I'm Go because you know me. I know the I know the rules. I know how to play. I, I like talking about. It. I like the everything about it. I'm going and Gordy's having trouble keeping up. From either perspective, what, what like I guess my my thought would be I, it's my job to try to recognize when my fellow players aren't able to keep up and hopefully in a non condescending way try to help them catch up as well as slow myself down. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Gordy, I'm actually interested. What, what, as someone who's had trouble keeping up, I, I assume. Don't. Uh, uh, what, what's your I, I advice? I definitely have, especially yeah. with you. <laughs> Sorry. So, what's your advice uh, if you have any on that? On that kind of trying to 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 keep up and, and follow along as you're going. Personally, uh, I've gotten into the habit of staring at that person mm -hmm. to keep track on whose turn it is. Especially, like, for example, Keith is a very fast talker, so his turns go a lot quicker than mine. So if I'm staring at him, I know when his turn's done because the movement will go to somebody else. The, but the biggest thing is um, for, for, uh, for the DMs in general, as I mentioned before, make sure your player knows that they can talk to you. Because I can talk to Keith in private if I don't want to call him out in front of everybody to slow down next time. Um, which, as a, uh, I was just going to say, as a player, which, would be to, you're, you're saying, make sure to try to make time and whatever you're comfortable with to talk to the DM. Yeah, or to said player. Because, like, I get extremely awkward because I feel like I'm just calling somebody out, going like, hey, you're... <laughs> Calm the fuck down. 
Censor. Shadow, censor. Whatever. Shadow didn't censor the first episode. Literally, Shadow just put a little thing in the corner that said, don't tell me what to do. <laughs> I don't care at this point. I'm not monetized. I don't give a crap. But yeah. Um, just as an example, it's like I, I'm scared to do confrontation and of sounding like a dick. So I'll say it in private and then we'll work on it in the next game. Which brings me to to the point of as the player that uh, if you're a player that that understands the rules and you you ever notice because not and not everyone does I, I think it's important to note that uh, I, I like to hope I have a decent level of social awareness um, as I'm reading the room and and I can understand when people have different struggles and uh, understand that someone is struggling I should say um, and if you don't that's fine but if you happen to notice that. Uh, I would think you try to make it accessible to, and even I've, I believe I've done it before. It's just shoot the comment. Hey, it, by the way, in private, son of a, by the way, in private, just message them or, or pull them aside. And just, by the way, if I'm going too fast, you can let me know. I can, I can help you understand what's going on. I know I'm the wizard and I'm uh, now they're all, they all have disadvantage on these roles, but advantage on these roles. And it's getting complicated if you're a player who understands the rules, it's always, I think, a great thing to do is stop and, and try to help the other people, under if they want to, to understand. Which... I think also... Oh. No, no, go ahead. I think also something that a lot of people don't realize is body language. Is when I start getting fl frustrated, you can definitely tell because I start getting tensed up and... It's very clear when I'm struggling to process stuff, me personally. So when someone like um, Austin, when he DMs, he's directly in front of me. So he has perfect view, of, especially when I'm struggling really hard. But Keith wouldn't because he's on to the side of me and he won't see me. Uh, well, so it's just a way of like, if you can tell someone's body language that they're struggling... Or in some cases, going nonverbal, which is something I've gone a few times. It definitely helps knowing signs. Like I'll like, like I'll play with the plushies and like squeeze them and like trying to focus. Mm. As, as an example. Um, and I'm curious, as Austin's take as someone, if I'm being honest, you, you, uh, as DM or player or whatnot, you've never seemed particularly aggressive about you can talk to me come to me if you have problems yada yada but you at the same note you've never been you know aggressively don't talk to me it's, it's your freaking pro or anything like that personally because some of our players in different games have commented they've been mildly nervous to talk to you because of your personality mostly and i usually yeah. just tell them yeah austin would have to care about anything in this universe first <laughs> besides yeah, cats me, <laughs> like i've told you i i am quite intimidating Pers for my personality mm. to a lot of people. Yeah. yeah. But and that's the thing is not being dismissive. Mm. That's that's not him bragging or anything, by the way, because again, he'd have to care to brag. I, I don't know yeah. I don't know how that's anyone would find that impressive. But oh, it's no. just one of those things of um You're saying not being dismissive. Yeah, it's I, th I find a big thing that happens a lot is people not. I don't know how to word this. Feeling comfortable? Not wanting to? I'm just trying to help. DMs who unfortunately make it very hard for players a, to. A want common to talk thing to. that happens in role playing games for both DMs and players is people are there for them, not for others. So you mean like, people out there for themselves or for, like, a specific person? Themselves. Okay. Yeah. Just, like, I'm here to have fun for me, not... I'm here as the DM so I can torture my players or I can make encounters. I'm not here because I care about what my players think. Hmm. Type thing. Which happens. And players... I'm, there's plenty of horror stories on Reddit. You can read about players there because they want power fantasy or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, and and I think that again comes down to as well. We we talked about don't be afraid uh, earlier in this episode. Uh, don't be afraid to to boot so or to consider, especially uh, uh, kicking someone out or, or moving to a different game set if it's a problem. Whatever. Don't I, I would say person. Don't be afraid to leave. Um, don't ever be afraid to leave a group, especially if there's a way you can do it with just look. This isn't working out. I'm sorry, guys. I can't. I there's. there's problems x y and z whatever it might be 
that's most of the time. If they're going to be unreasonable about it, I'd say you shouldn't be friends with them anyways, because it, it's understandable. Um, if the group's not you functioning. Sometimes you don't have to give reasons. It's just like, hey, I, I just can't play anymore. Yeah, personal. They, personal reasons. Like, you don't have to tell them, oh, it's because of XYZ, all this stuff. Because it can sound blank. They can take it the wrong way. Hmm. It's really just you can't handle it. Hmm. In my case, I've I've tried D and D off and on throughout the years, and there have unfortunately been very toxic people in all those groups. So, I've learned the hard way of over explaining. <laughs> that was fun. Yeah. Beside the point, you don't have to give reason if you are uncomfortable giving the reason. If they can't accept that you just need to leave, then there's something wrong yeah. with them. And, and I don't know about other games, actually, to that I'd ask Austin, but I can tell you, in my experience at least, granted I'm, I'm the extrovert here, jeez, I'm crow, I, I freaking burp it everywhere. Um, in my experience, at least with D, the D&D community, it is big enough. It's absolutely big enough that you can go, look, this isn't working out, whatever, however you want to do it, leave that group, and you can find another. I, I promise you, if you look in the right places, if you look properly, you can find more groups. I guarantee to you, especially uh, maybe maybe it's just easy for me because uh, I'm not as aggressive about it as Austin, I'm sure, because he's way smarter than me. But uh, if you know the rules in any way, shape, or form, you can find people that are going to want to play. I would How say that I... the one thing that you don't consider is the whole the fact you're an extrovert willing to talk and learn and meet new people. Yeah. But... Yeah, like, uh, for example, the only reason I met Keith is because my coworker, who was a mutual friend, had... An all might ringtone, and we just started talking <laughs> nerd stuff. Well, and then she invited me to play. Well, jeez, I'm crow. Shake my whole desk when I. Um, yeah, well, well, feel free, because uh, that's something, at least personally, I, I'm always. I love being wrong, actually. I'm, I'm more than anything, personally, I, I try to very aggressively enjoy being wrong, because it means I'm learning something. So, so please, is it harder for you? Because I know you're at least somewhat introverted, Austin. Is it. You say you've DM so many games. Is it harder for you to find games to, to play in because of because of talking to people and whatnot? Or well, it's one of those things of if I don't know. So if I don't know anyone who is in a game, mm. I'm not going to be in a game. Yeah, sounds. You got to find one person you know that is playing. Yeah, the only reason that I've been in so many games is because I have worked. I've done a bunch of stuff like interning ship and work and all these like weird things throughout my life where it's just the type of people where D is a thing yeah like i was in animation i was in uh austin is a uh, uh, austin is an anime protagonist he's literally done freaking everything i wish i was kidding i've yet to find one thing i've been like yeah so you know i was looking into this and him not go yeah i've done i've done that Sure, Austin hasn't given birth. <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> um, uh, I've eaten from Taco Bell. I think that counts. <laughs> um, but Maybe yeah, Taco Bell sponsorship. Uh, yeah, right, Jason. Rage Shadow. No. <laughs> um, but yeah. So, I mean, maybe it, it's it one of the things of. So, one of the things that the reason I want to start with like group dynamics is a big part of it is just group cohesion just playing with people that you like playing with it's even if you don't like like you can be best friends with a person that doesn't mean you're gonna like playing D D with them oh yeah um one thing is there's you gotta play like as a group certain groups like certain things like i hate like the hobo like the murder hobo type of D D games but I have a lot of friends who love that type of gameplay, mm. and game style, or like the multi hall power fantasy stuff. Yeah, my favorite type of like role playing is all right. You're thrown in a gutter with fifty rats, and you're given a broken bottle. Good luck. Yeah, figure it out. Yeah, it's 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 like it's why I like Dark Souls. It's like here's a challenge. Good luck, my bud. Mm. Yeah, type of things <laughs> like struggling. Mm. Um, I, I actually. Um... I recently found that um, I've joined, uh, rejoined, or however you want to work. Basically, one of my old DMs is DMing again, and they ran a, an aggressive Monty, aggressively Monty Hall campaign. Like, we were, it was supposed to be because they really like Slice of Life. 
They really, really yeah. like it, which is fine. It's it's usually slice of life isn't my thing, and I've found more and more personally that if I go into a game with the right mindset, I can have fun with it. It comes down to I need to know what I'm in store for, if that makes sense. Like that, what was that game that I was aggressively against the treasure at first? Gloomhaven. Gloomhaven. And I kind of realized that if I go in with a less competitive mindset, because for some reason I'm stupidly competitive instinctually, which is bad, but moving on, um, it, it, I can see how I can have fun. I, we were also talking about um, original D&D and how that was geared differently. Yeah. I guess, at least as Austin described it to me, it was very much the DM has his own bound rule sets and is trying to get the players to die, right? Not inherently, but it's very much less it was a lot more lethal of a game yeah and it wasn't you make a character and your character develops and as a player it's your story it's you know your character gonna freaking die which which makes sense in the yeah it was dungeons and dragons it's going to dungeons getting loot and killing dragons it wasn't like so much about the story or role play as much as it is now yeah which as when i looked at it as someone who plays current D &D, i was like wow that sounds nightmare that sounds horrible i would never have fun with that and then i stopped and really realized if i went in with this mindset of it's it, we're all having fun it doesn't need to be like we hate each other but i'm against the dm he is my enemy and i want to beat him i, I could get in you know what i mean yeah um but getting back to because i i went off on a mad tangent um how do you find because yeah, right. Uh, when you're talking about group dynamics, if you have a problem with, with the way the group dynamics are working and you don't think you can find another group, is it just, uh, I, I guess I'm boned? or I mean, it's one of those unfortunate things. Like, if you look at Reddit horror stories of D&D, the big thing is, like, I don't like this group, but I'm never going to be in, I'm not going to be in a group for, like, years if I'm not yeah. in this group. I don't have choice. And, like, there's, like, small towns, like, rural countries. It's hmm. a thing. My suggestion would be uh, online D&D. Look for groups, look on Reddit, look on like uh, sites that do online D&D. Mm. I've uh, have had good experiences there. Um, um, I, I was just going to comment, especially uh, with everything that's going on right now in the world, um, I, I'm hoping if he's, Austin has given me a few, a, a little lesson, I'm hoping soon he can give me a refresher and I can look at some stuff some more, but um, doing tabletop simulator, we're not sponsored by them or anything because they do cost money. But I, I actually do because there's World 20, which is good. I'm not crazy over them, but it is free if people don't have money. And yep. I think World Anvil does something now. <laughs> I'm not positive. Oh, really? There's a bunch of there's a bunch of sites. Cody, you're, you're I personally something? like tabletop more because mm. we were able to um, emulate the tools I use in real life. Yeah, which was we were able to make. We were able to make versions of it in the game, which I don't think we could have done with any of the other programs. And I was going to say, is, yeah, oh God, yeah it's, roll 20, I don't think you could, period. But which is entirely thanks to Austin, because um, he, he was the one who figured out how uh, to do that, which was great. Um, which I appreciate. Um, yeah, I, I do recommend if, if people, anyone has a game that they're trying to, if you've got people that can't afford it and are willing to, whatever. Roll 20 is a great, great system if you can learn it. It, it plays just like normal. It, it really does, it, at least to me. I, I thought I was going to, like, really dislike it, and I, I don't, if you're all right with not seeing people physically. I think it's awesome. You can still do, like, a Zoom call or a Discord call at the same time if you want. Yeah. Well, because we've had... Go old school and use Skype. Hmm. I... I... <laughs> oh. Oh. Um. That, that hurt. That hurt. Um. I was kidding. Yeah, I know. Right? But, uh... So, yeah because um, group dynamics is something and I've seen it I've seen it many a time and the thing a lot of people don't remember that I didn't remember was was that past experiences can heavily color the way you see things um, it happened very aggressively I, I keep kicking my desk um, it happened very aggressively in one in uh, our Tuesday game with Austin when it came down to a loot thing and players weren't sharing loot and in my experience I, I it was I, I have played in games where it was select few people were always the fastest. They were always the ones that didn't really care about killing the thing or saving the people. All they wanted was the money. They got all the loot, and because of that, they were able to become aggressively more powerful than us. And that was it was a huge problem. It ruined I think two separate groups I've been a part of. It was a real problem. And when I was getting, I went to Austin. I was like, "Are you not going to back me uh, after the game?" I was like, "Are you not going to back me up on this, dude?" 
in retrospect, I was a total dick. Um, but but I was like, are you really not backing me up on this? And he's like, no, Keith, you're stupid. Shut up. <laughs> yeah, more or less. <laughs> uh, well, he explained to me that, that it comes down to, as well, as a player, if you're... You need to know whether or not you can trust your DM. And it came down to, Keith, shut up. I know what I'm doing. And I've known Austin long enough that I know when he says that he he, he knows what he's doing. He, he knows how to balance this. He knows what he's doing in terms of who he's keeping track of 5 million variables I can't even think of, let alone the ones I can, and processing um, who has money, who has power, in what ways, and why. And, and I think it's really important to know whether or not you can trust your DM with something like that. Because that, that kind of yeah, thing... Uh can can oh, ruin God. group di- that, I was just saying that kind of thing can ruin group dynamics um really really easily if you're not careful uh, um i was i was going to it's okay. a long story so i'm going to make a cut um the first time i played D&D i had a dm who disrespected me horribly calling me the r word when i asked them to slow down and no one in the group stood up for me so that made me not try D and D for another ten years. So situations suck, but a lot of times you just have to stand up for yourself, or yeah. <coughs> or just leave. I wish I left sooner. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those things of it's a lot of times just having the right group, and as a DM, mm-hmm. vetting who you want for a group based upon like how people mesh together is a big thing. Mm. Yeah, that girl clearly was not suitable for a DM, in my opinion. If she had to call me the R word, when all I did was say, can you slow down, <laughs> when she was reading. Mm. It put a bad taste in my mouth, but I'm happy I tried again. Yeah. Um... I just wanted to bring that up. as like It's not just players who could be bad. It can also be DMs. Oh, yeah. So don't assume... The DM is the best care person or know it all and all that shit. Yeah, I'm Just throwing I'm, it out there because we keep talking about players. Uh, I'm I'm very fortunate with, with that. Like I said, I've I've known Austin for God only knows how long at this point. Um, and, and I do. I, I I at least have some vague grasp on his intelligence level. So um, I, I know that it's over nine thousand. I don't know, but I know when he says I know what I'm talking about. I know that he does, and that's I think that's important in a group, especially where I I don't know if I feel like it's fair to say I'm one of the more aggressively extroverted in the group. Yes. Yeah. So so as the one who who talks a lot and and I, I just didn't want to assume, but I'm I'm pretty sure I'm the most aggressively extroverted person in the room, uh, and. Uh, as such, it's it's important for to know that, um, especially then when Austin says, "Shut up, Keith." I I know. Okay, he knows what he's talking about. He knows what's happening. He's realizing things I'm not, and and I should listen to him in that fashion. Yeah, but it is one of the things of if your DM tells you just shut up. Keep in mind the whole "shut up, Keith" thing is because of our of our dynamic yeah. as friends. Yeah. Yeah. If your DM's telling you to shut up when you come to a problem, that might not be a good thing. Yeah, I, I, yeah. apologies. I use that as a generic term of, hey, Keith, can you quiet down or whatever. It is oh, our, yeah. our it, dynamic. It came down to, you had a problem, you came to me afterwards, and we talked it through. Yeah. And now I think that we're both okay with what happened. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Which was entirely just me going, oh, I'm wrong, and moving on. <laughs> it's so normal. It, yeah. It boiled down to, it's just a game, why you gotta be mad? Yeah, it actually did. It very much boiled down to that. Yep. And it is one of those things, like, the heat of the moment stuff. Oh, yeah. And whenever there's conflict, taking a breather helps. Yeah, which at the time, well, it's something I actually could get into in a whole other video about, is hosting game. Because uh, I started hosting games here, and I hosted more games here, and I there were things, and that was one of the reasons it was such a heated thing for me, is because literally one of the players that was getting all this cash was like, hey, Keith, can you go grab me, uh, I think it was hot chocolate or something I was making. And I go upstairs and I come down and they're getting gold. And I'm like, what? What? You know? Yep. So, not that that justifies... Not that that justifies my reaction, but, you know, that that, that was I did a big part of it. This is... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call this episode Keith hits his... Sarge hits his mic or something, I swear. 
Shadow, you need to do a count of how many times I hit my mic. <laughs> I'm just wanting you to bash your face on it. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> um, so, it, it's it's an interesting uh, thing. And it's, it's something... My, my big concern with this entire conversation is a lot of it comes down to... An, uh, it feels to me like a lot of it comes down to a concept of saying you need to be able to read the room and read the people. And I know that not everyone can. Yeah, which is why I said make sure it's clear that they can talk to you in private if necessary. Yeah, if you're a DM or whatnot. Or just a player in general. Like, I've messaged one of our players in the past. Hey, I can't focus when you're screaming in my ear. <laughs> and so they calmed down the next game and paid more attention, which, which was nice. Mm. So, um... Which, as a DM, if you're not good at reading the room, a big thing I would go is talk to the room and just ask for advice and talk to mm. players. Ask what for solutions, because being the DM does not mean you need to know the answers to everything. Uh, actually, that's a real... That's actually a great piece of advice, yeah. And yeah, actually, I hadn't, that's a great way. If, you, if you're if you bad at the subtleties of body language or reading the room or, or understanding people, I personally don't think there's anything wrong if you're able to, to just outright say, hey... What's what? How are you feeling? You know, or, or maybe if you in private, if you're not sure if people would be comfortable with it, just how do you feel about the game? What are your problems? Yada yada. It comes down heavily to the fact that being a DM is a massive, massive time and effort investment. Yeah, a good trick that I've used a few times with Keith is if I'm, as I mentioned before, I can go nonverbal, is I'll use Facebook Messenger or something and I'll message hmm. them. And then scoot like their phone towards them or something to show that I need them to see the said message. Yeah, which is also or write down on a piece of paper. Which is also a great tool if you want to do anything private in general. Like we've done all kinds of different brain talks and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, but so um, I don't know how much more we got on this, Austin, because we've been recording for like uh, seventy-five minutes. <laughs> well, keep a good um, chunk of it's going to get cut off, but yeah, yeah. I think. We covered a lot of at least the important stuff because all I can think of is like nitpicky, picky stuff that's like situation dependent. Yeah. So I I, I didn't want to end. Ow, my shoulder again. I didn't want to end everything uh, unless you uh, unless you were good with that, Austin. There's like we go on forever. Oh yeah, I think that covers yeah. the gist of it. Like we talk about like taking turn orders and stuff like that. I think a big part of it is as DM just making sure that everyone is able to understand what's going on and be able to speak their mind. Yeah. Um, this is a big thing to, to look at. And just uh, uh, at the end of the day, I think the big part of as weird as it is with communication issues in D and D is, is just straight up do what you can to communicate more and never be afraid to communicate in private with someone. Uh, <laughs> communication problems in D and D are just like communication problems in a relationship. There's mm. almost no difference. Actually, yeah, fair. Just, just do what you can to create open and honest communication with, with people, and it'll work. It hopefully it should work at least overall better. Yeah, the idea was just being in a relationship with like three to six people. It's great. <laughs> you dirty pervert. Um, but if uh, I think that's all we're gonna go with today, um, so I hope people enjoy it. If you, um, I'm gonna, I have to make sure because the first episode right here is when it cut out uh, my my screen capture. <laughs> um, uh, please uh, remember to like the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you want to see more videos like it. Please comment. I, I, I this is actually something I'm really passionate about. I want to hear any comments. If it's the, like I said before, if it's Keith, you're a jerk. Um, Austin is abusing you. You're probably right. Uh, <laughs> whatever it may be. Um, I think everyone in chat should just write Think twice Keith, you're if dumb, you need help. Or Keith, you suck. Yeah, yeah, something yeah. like that. Um, so, um, uh, any last words, Admiral? No. Sarge, Sarge, being relieved of duty. Wow, I can't even freaking talk today. Being relieved of duty. Have a good one, guys.